Welcome to part two of my Linux CNC how tutorial series. Uh, this one should be pretty quick since all we're going to do is go over a few changes I made to the INI file that we covered in video number one. Uh, this INI file and the default how files that came with it were made by running the stepconf wizard. And that set things up pretty well for us. But there are still a few changes we can make that will get rid of some of the, uh, I guess, rough spots of working with Linux CNC. And uh, I figure as long as I'm shooting all these videos on how, I may as well do this one too and save you the trouble of going through that 700-something uh, uh, page manual, uh, you know, the PDF that comes with Linux CNC, right? That's a lot of docs there to go through. And rather than having you read all that, I'll just show you the parts of the INI config uh, that I found most useful myself. Of course, if uh, you see anything here that you like and you want to read more about it, that manual I just showed you is the first place you ought to go. Now, since all these files I'm showing you are already saved uh, up on GitHub in a Git project, I figure we'll take advantage of that and go over the changes I've been making incrementally, step by step. So typically, I'm partial to working on the command line. Uh, but there is one tool I like working uh, with for Git projects called Gitk, which gives you a pretty little view of all the commits in a repository and makes it really easy to see you know, what changes happened on which file where. Now, uh, you're also welcome to browse along on the uh, GitHub website here, and you can see all the same uh, you know, commits and changes that happened here. But personally, I like working you know, on a local copy with GitK. So if you want this tool, uh, you can get it on Linux CNC, obviously, uh, but it's not come installed by default. Uh, it's not too hard to get it uninstalled on your computer, but it is a bit beyond the scope of this video, so that's a topic for another time. Uh, for now, let's just take a look at the changes I made between how tutorial part one right here and where we are now in part two. So going down to this commit, we can start looking at all the changes I made step by step. Now the first one is in the, uh, you know, this INI file. I removed the header up at the top. You know, this comment here that tells you about when you rerun the stepconf wizard, this file gets overwritten. I took that out because as, you know, this comment here says, and as I mentioned in video number one, when you rerun the stepconf wizard, it will overrun your INI. So now that we're making other changes to the INI file, we simply can't rerun the stepconf wizard, right? It's on us now to manually keep this file up to date and to make the changes that we want. So with that in mind, this comment doesn't really matter for us anymore because we're not gonna be running that wizard ever again. So I simply took that comment out and that's why it's uh, you know, marked out here in red. A little bit below, uh, I added a few lines with this uh, option here for the RS274 NGC start codes. <laughs> now this option uh, sets a few G codes that run every time you load up the access GUI. So I set it to run two of them. Uh, firstly, G20, because I live in freedom country where we use inches, right? <laughs> so G20 sets things to be explicitly in inches. Uh, the other G code, S1, is kind of an important one. Uh, this sets your spindle RPM to be, in my case, one, you know, something non-zero. And that's important because I found if you don't set a non-zero spindle RPM, then when you run G3 or G4 to you know, trigger the tool, it simply gets ignored. So clearly my plasma cutter doesn't have an RPM, right? S1 is nonsense for a, a plasma cutter. And in fact, even for most, uh, most hobbyist mills and lays, you know, the things you would uh, you'd actually upgrade to CNC with Linux, they typically don't have uh, an RPM setting either. You know, they have like pulleys and gears that you manually swap out and then a switch that's simply off and on. So for either of those things, you do wanna make sure you set a non-zero spindle RPM. So in this case, I just set S1 and that makes sure that it isn't zero, right? Uh, a bit further down, I made a few other changes to the uh, GUI. One of them is that it has a, a few options for grid settings so that when you're uh, running, the Axis graphical user interface, it uh, you know has the grids for. I guess I need a yeah. You can see the really light grids here. That spacing, and by default, it gives you a few spacings uh, in millimeters. And again, I live in America, so we don't use millimeters. And I set it to have a few in inches. And in fact, like five and ten inches. Who, who uses that? Right? It's six inches is a half foot, and twelve inches is a foot. So I made that little change too. Uh, then for the increments here, this is a setting for the options on your uh, your jog distances. I guess I need to 
actually uh, start the machine up before we can break that. But there's a few options here for um, your jog distances. And since I have a plasma cutter, you know, I'm not gonna be jogging in tenths of a thou. Like, it's, it's a plasma cutter, it's not gonna do that, right? So I set the, uh, the jog increments to something a bit more reasonable for my machine. And usually, you know, I actually use the, uh, the continuous jog mode anyway. But sometimes it is nice to have um, the ability to jog in discrete increments as well. All right, so now on to the next set of changes. On uh, this one here, we change a few more default files and a few other things, right? Looking by the message, message right here. So uh, let's jack the uh, context lines up just so we see a bit more of the uh, surrounding file. There we go. So over here in the display section of the INI, I, I wouldn't change the default linear velocity. Uh, this is for the uh, jog speed when you start the machine up. And by default, it's one tenth of the max rapid speed. So this is in uh, inches per yeah, inches per second in my case. Uh, so it defaulted to 0.6, uh, and I made it six instead, right? So now that's the same as my max uh, rapid speed of 360 inches per minute, because 10% of the rapid speed is <laughs> way too slow, and nobody has time for that, right? So just jank that up, and that way, every time you load axis, you don't need to go down here and change the, uh, the jog speed yourself, right? Otherwise, it starts off like, way down to this end, and that's just, it's too slow. So check that up there uh, by default. Let's see, next one. This option here, uh, that's not, you know, previously in the file, and I wouldn't added it. I saw this one in the um, manual PDF and thought this is a nice option to have. It uh, sets the default file that gets opened up when you launch the Axis GUI. So typically, there's a file that uh, has the text Linux CNC, right? And it's like a little, just a, a default G code you could run on your machine. Well, personally, I didn't like seeing that. I just like having a blank slate. So I wrote a G code file that is simply a blank slate, right? Open the file, just a comment. M2 is in a G code and a file. There you go. <laughs> so with the, uh, the option of uh, open file, that sets your default to be that one instead. That way you just have a cleaner workspace when you open it up. Uh, and in fact, when I am making uh, G-code to actually run on the machine, I have a script around my laptop that turns SVG files in the G-code. And as part of that script, I then copy the, um, the new G-code file over to my CNC machine uh, over the, the Wi-Fi network. So there's a tool you can use called uh, SCP on Linux for doing copies over the network. So I use SCP and just copy the file right to my CNC machine and then save it as default.ngc. Uh, and that way, when I actually open up the Access GUI, the file I want to run is already there. You know, just a little bit of a uh, nicety. Going a bit further down in the, uh, the INI file, we've also got this subroutine path option. And this is a directory that uh, you can put G code subroutines in. Basically, little snippets of code that you can then call from other larger G code programs. So you can uh, take the things you use most often, and rather than copy and pasting that code around, you can you know consolidate it in one place. So right now, that uh, that file is let's see. Um, there's nothing in here. It's empty. But eventually, we will add um, subroutines for uh, probing and for doing piercing with uh, the plasma torch. And there'll be some smarts in them that kind of make it, uh, make it a nice subroutine that's actually worth having it in, uh, you know, in a separate file with some uh, safeguards around it. In fact, we can uh, even look up here and see. So yeah, over here, here's an example for uh, one subroutine for doing laser offsets. And later on we add yeah, add this one here for cutting, and then this one for probing. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Those will come in part six. <laughs> so back down to where we were. Uh, here, this one? Yes, okay. So that's the subroutine path. And then a few more changes right here. Uh, activating the how UI uh, functionality for Linux CNC. Um, basically, when you put this little note in here, it makes sure that it loads uh, a how component that lets you connect how pins to things in the access GUI. So again, we don't have any of them up here yet, 
but eventually we'll add a Pi VCP, Pi VCP panel here on the side uh, that has buttons on it that can then control how pins. And we can use those how pins to run these commands down here. Again, this is coming up in a later section, but we're putting it in the i9 file now, just kind of marking that there is that option there for you to use. Let's see, a bit further down still, I wouldn't change uh, all the latch velocities on my four axes. Uh, this is the velocity that it uses when it's doing the second seek for your home switches. You know, I have home sequence one, which is it, it goes up to the uh, switch, hits it, backs off, uh, bumps it again, and then when it backs off that second time, that is, uh, you know, called homing the machine right there. So personally, I like having the second latching sequence be a little bit slower than the first one. And by default, the step comp wizard makes them both the same speed. So I went and changed them both back. And uh, you might also notice that these uh, velocities are negative here because my X and Y um, home switch location is uh, in the negative space. It's like, you know, point uh, negative one quarter of an inch here and then negative half an inch on the Y. So the velocities are also negative. And then same thing on the Z, I changed the uh, second velocity, or I guess I made the first velocity a bit faster in this one, and the second uh, reseek velocity is a little bit slower. Uh, a bit further down, these uh, git ignore files are something specific to git and not actually related to Linux CNC at all. And then we have the uh, default uh, G code file that I mentioned before. And in case you're curious, the, uh, the other default file that you normally have is, let's see. Uh, where is that one? Uh, this one right here. So if I can copy that and see if I can just maybe paste that and have it. There we go. <laughs> That's the default file normally. So now that I've uh, set my own, it doesn't load this on startup anymore. Anyway, on to the next set of changes here. Oh, this is another great one. This is, yeah. <laughs> Very happy when I found this. So there is an option for the user command file, which is a thing that uh, Axis will run on startup again, which lets you modify the default behavior of the Axis graphical user interface. Um, personally, I use mine to tweak the, um, the shortcut buttons because in my opinion, the default, default shortcut buttons kind of suck. So uh, basically you have this point at a file and that file is a Python script that makes uh, use of the Kinter library. Uh, let's see. Actually, since this whole file is new, the whole thing here is appearing in git k as green, saying that these lines here have been added, and that's kind of annoying. So let's pop it open in just a regular old uh, text editor. There we go. So this is a Python file that takes advantage of uh, the Kinter library. That's a uh, thing for writing uh, graphical user interfaces, and it's the same library that Axis itself uses. So uh, it's one of the options that lets us hook into it and tweak some of the things on there before Axis even begins. And personally, I uh, I don't really write GUIs. You know, I'm a software developer, but I don't I don't fuck with the graphical systems, right? Even here, I'm using a command line text editor because that's that's just kind of the way I am. Um, but I was able to kind of stumble around online enough and find the, uh, the function I needed to remove the parts I didn't like. So you can either use the file I'm showing you here or uh, do the same and stumble around until you find the right code in Stack Overflow and kind of find the things uh, that you need to make the GUI work the way you want. So basically I'm just removing different shortcuts that I didn't find work well for me. So for example, uh, when you typically use Axis, the Control R shortcut will reload a G-code file. Say after you make some changes, you hit Control R to reload it. If you hit plain R, that runs the file. <laughs> so having those two be so similar uh, is a little bit dangerous, right? <laughs> and I'd accidentally have it like start running a file a few times and I meant to reload the file. And if your machine is in the wrong spot, whatever, you might wrap it through something you didn't mean to wrap it through. Um, so I simply unbind the R key and now to run a file, I have to go into the GUI and actually hit the run button. And the R key now doesn't do anything at all. Uh, Control R does still work for reloads, but R itself is you know, a no-op now. Uh, similarly, I went and removed the, uh, the shortcuts for the buttons um, one to zero. You know, that whole 
uh, number keypad range, I remove them as well because I use uh, the caps lock key plus numbers as like global shortcuts of mine for like launching other programs and stuff like that. So I found a few times that I accidentally hit a shortcut of mine, bumped the wrong key and ended up like dropping my feed speed, um, you know, to like 50%, right? Cause those number pads by default, if I hit, I guess I can't do that now cause I have access anyway. <laughs> Typically those shortcuts will adjust your feed override. So if you're in the middle of a program and you accidentally drop your, your feed speed to half, suddenly your machine goes really slow and you scrap your work and that's no fun. So uh, now if I wanna actually change the feed speed and find the machine's going too slow or too fast for good quality cut, I can manually adjust the slider, but the shortcut keys don't do anything and they are now safe you know, for me to not accidentally hit them. Uh, for similar reasons, I unbind the backtick key because uh, you know, for what I see in the comment over here, and then this last little bit of Python, this one funky call, uh, what that does is it gets rid of the prompt when you go to close the window. Because you know, when I'm here and I hit the X, yes, I, I wanna quit, right? And before it asks you every fucking time, like, are you sure you wanna quit? Yes, I'm sure, that's why I hit the X. So now it quits silently. And that's just, ah, the little things, you know? <laughs> the little things are the things that matter. Uh, yeah, and that I think is all in that commit. So on the last one, uh, and this one's pretty small, all we're doing is renaming some of the how files for a bit better organization. So uh, for any how file to be loaded by uh, Linux CNC, you do have to explicitly list it here in your INI. Um, but I personally find it a bit easier to, you know, for my own organization, if the uh, files are numbered. So I wouldn't rename them and put a little number in the front just so I can easier, uh, more easily tell which order they get listed in. So right now we just have uh, you know, 10 steppers, that's the first one, and then 99 postgui is the last one. And those are based on the, uh, the initial how file here that you can see I renamed uh, from how tutorial to 10 dash steppers, and then the 99 postgui I renamed, or custom postgui dot how I renamed to 99 uh, dash postgui.hal. And then as we add more and more how files, I'll go tacking them in here in order with number names just to help me keep track of which one gets run first. Uh, that naming convention is kind of something you'll see on Linux systems a lot. And since I work with those kind of systems, I personally found it easier. And that's all we have for part two. Really not that much, right? When we load uh, access again, it still looks and works most of the same. Just a little bit nicer, right? We've removed a few of the rough edges. So uh, in the next video now, we will get to writing you know, some HAL for real. And we'll use that to uh, trigger an additional external relay from our G-code. So uh, yeah, that's all for this video. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.